Welcome back to Battleground Florida. Joining me now is Florida Representative Carlos Guillermo Smith, a Democrat from Orlando and the legislature's first out gay Hispanic lawmaker. Representative Smith, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me, Evan. On Monday, the governor said people who oppose this bill, like yourself, are sloganeering by calling it the Don't Say Gay bill. So let's start there. The bill does not say don't say gay. In fact, it does not have the word gay in the bill text at all. So why is that not a misrepresentation of the bill? Well, the fact that the word gay is not in the bill is irrelevant. The effect of the bill is the same. The bill overtly censors classroom instruction of sexual orientation, meaning the teacher can't say it. They can't say gay as part of instruction. And what is included in classroom instruction? We don't know. We don't know because the sponsors of the Don't Say Gay bill refuse to define what classroom instruction means. Uh, and because the bill has this vigilante enforcement mechanism that allows for individuals to sue a school if they believe there's a violation of House Bill 1557, what you're going to have is you're going to have uh, teachers who are afraid mm -hmm. to broach the topic of LGBTQ people or, you know, really include LGBTQ people in the classroom at all for fear that they're going to be investigated. There's going to be a lawsuit. They're going to have their careers ruined. And unfortunately, that's the chilling effect that comes from this bill. I want to push back on you right there because the, the bill sponsor, I imagine, would say something like, look, that's not in the bill. He has said multiple times, he said it on the floor and in committee, that, look, kids ask questions, that's okay. You know, if Billy wants to talk about his two mommies when he comes to school, there's no problem with that. Are, are you just not buying that? I'm not buying it because it doesn't matter what the bill sponsor says. The text of the bill is what the law is. You talk to any teacher and they'll tell you, what is classroom instruction? Everything they do is classroom instruction, including talking to kids, answering their questions, uh, and everything under the sun. You know, that's one of the things, Evan, that makes this bill so dangerous, is it's so intentionally vague that so many folks and so many schools are just going to be scared about including LGBTQ people at all in the classroom, which is dangerous because LGBTQ people like myself, we are a healthy and normal part of any society and any school. Conversations about us, visibility of LGBTQ families is not dangerous. And this bill sends a message that we are dangerous. Do you feel like uh, that branding, the don't say gay branding, help or hurt the efforts to defeat the bill? Well, I think it helped people understand the scope of the bill, because again, what you have here is an unprecedented censorship of a topic in our classrooms. When you look at Florida statute, there's no existing statutory prohibition on other so-called sensitive topics such as abortion, suicide, drug use, uh, issues of life and death, war. None of those topics are prohibited from classroom instruction. So it's just us then, which sends a really ugly message to LGBTQ youth of all ages who really need our support. And I also just want to point out, Evan, this bill is not limited to K-3. It's also including grades uh, 4 through 12 because the bill goes on to say that classroom instruction on sexual orientation or gender identity would also be prohibited if it is done in a manner that is not deemed age appropriate or developmentally appropriate in accordance with state standards. What are those state standards? We don't know. They've not been developed. And the idea that everyone is on the same page on what is or is not age-appropriate inclusion of LGBTQ people in our schools is, 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 is a joke. Obviously, there's disagreement. Representative Smith, recent polling that has used specific wording from this controversial part of the bill, unlike previous polling that we saw that was a little bit more generic, has shown that a majority of Americans support it. 51% in a poll by Politico uh, last week, 52% in one by Floridians for economic advancement. Do you understand why parents support it and don't want this instruction in grades K through three? 
What I understand is that there's a lot of confusion about what is in the bill and what the bill actually says, because the reality is, is that supporters of the Don't Say Gay bill have continued to conflate inclusion of LGBTQ families in the classroom with conversation about sex ed or instruction about sexual activity. That has never been the case in the bill. The bill does not censor uh, conversations or instruction for younger kids on sex ed or sex activity. I think we can all agree that there's an appropriate age for that. Instead, it censors the inclusion of LGBTQ people, which is not an act and it's not a thing. It's an entire community of folks. So let's talk about that in a little more detail. The governor has said that people who oppose the bill are not arguing against it on the merits. So let me ask you directly, do you think it's appropriate to have classroom instruction on sexual orientation or gender identity, specifically in grades K through three? There has never been classroom instruction as part of curriculum. So let's talk about one of them, because this is one of the placards the governor's office used in the bill signing on Monday. This, this is the gender bread person, which is a teaching tool for young children. This was in the Palm Beach County School District LGBTQ plus critical support guide. It, you can see it has a scale here for gender identity, gender expression, anatomical sex, and sexual attraction and romantic attraction. Uh, there was another placard they showed from a book titled Call Me Max, which was read in a Palm Beach County school classroom, according to a mom there, Erin Lovely. Uh, the, the words there of the book say, when I looked in the mirror, I saw a girl, kind of, but because I'm transgender, I wanted to see a boy. So, so again, let me just ask you, do you think it is appropriate to use either of these as teaching tools with kids in kindergarten through third grade? Absolutely not. I don't think it's appropriate. And I want to correct the record, these materials are not being used in classrooms. The critical support guide is what is used not in K-3, not for kids. These are materials that are used as tools for adults to understand concepts of sexual orientation and gender identity. They're not being used in the classroom, and if they are, that shouldn't happen. I'm not aware anywhere that they're being used in the classroom, certainly not in K-3. There is a reason why Republicans and Governor DeSantis and supporters of the Don't Say Gay bill want people to be afraid of these materials. They want them to be afraid of it because they want you to believe that if a kid sees these materials, it will turn them gay or turn them transgender. Kids are not turned gay or turned trans. They just are gay. They are trans. I can tell you that as someone who used to be a gay kid, you just are. And oftentimes you're struggling to find support and that support oftentimes only comes from the school. Representative Carlos Guillermo Smith, Democrat of Orlando, very much appreciate your time uh, and answering these tough questions. Thank you so much for being on Battleground Florida. Thanks for having me, Evan. We'll be right back.